Hello, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury 3 after a bit of a hiatus because Christmas. Christmas happened. It was a good Christmas, in case you're wondering. I actually didn't get a huge amount of gifts, but I got good gifts. Got a hard to back up my stuff on, for one thing. That was, a, that was a really good gift. Anyway, I hope you guys all had good various winter holidays and celebrations. And now, well, New Year's is coming up tomorrow. So that's why I'm not going to be doing any casts tomorrow or Thursday. Which is why I'm doing one today, because it's been a little while and I don't really want to get too out of practice. We're going to have a few replays that look like they're going to be very interesting. The first one is going to be Lowry and Flipsip on Avalanche. And in case you're wondering, I remember I mentioned last time, before the tournament, that I don't like it that I can't watch replay without knowing who wins. Well, I'm pretty sure Skazi, I think it was Skazi, it might have been Orpheus, but I'm fairly certain Skazi, pointed me to some CSS and to a Chrome plugin that basically... It essentially just blacks out the text, so I can't see what's being, who wins, who loses, unless I click a particular button. And that means I actually genuinely do not know for these replays who wins and who loses, which is awesome! I actually get to play it like it's live! I'm so happy about that. Anyway, that aside, let's get to the game. I'm wasting time. So we have Flipstep in the northwest side of the map going for Amphib, which is a little unusual in Avalanche. This is... Let's go over, yeah, light vehicles for Lowry, more usual. Avalanche, for those of you not familiar, fairly small map. You see you have two metals around everywhere. In the northeast corner is mostly valuable for the energy reclaim. There's about... Let's select you here. There we go. There's about 2,000 energy in that corner. And also there's this hill here, which has another 3,000 or so energy, but that's a little bit harder to get to. There's quite a lot of energy reclaim overall. So it's very important to bear in mind when you're building power plants that you could be building... You could just be reclaiming energy. However, as you can see, Flips have not really going for that. Lowry, neither, because they are kind of out of the way. The reclaim's out of the way a bit. I think Lowry did go for a bit of reclaim. But yeah, it's kind of tricky to pull off. Most players, they'll go either towards the north or the south. The south is more valuable, obviously, because there's far more metal. There's like 14 metal, or plus 14 metal worth total of metal spots. Do have a short fight coming here. Lowry is getting the upper hand quite quickly. The Duck's able to get a shot off though, and it looks like, still, Flipstep is falling behind, sorry, yeah, Flipstep falling behind, Flipstep has, they have a Duck on the far side of the enemy units, this is a bad position to be in, whenever you want, if you want your opponent to approach, you always put your units between their units and, what the, yes, I was playing around earlier, anyway, whenever you want them to approach you, Put your units between their units and their base, and their units pretty much have to approach it on defense. And Lowry getting away with a single Scorcher left, killing both ducks, but giving Flipstep some of the reclaim. Anyway, as I was saying about the map itself, it's a very small map. And I find use of Amphib Plant considerably popular. It's something that's become far more popular in the last few months than it ever was before. I mean, there was, of course, the rebalance project for C, which has worked swimmingly from the looks of it. Considering just how much people are using Amphib and Hover, I mean Hover was always fairly popular, but Amphib was never used. And even C in C maps, that, or ships I should say, shipyard in C maps, we see that a lot as well. That is also fairly unusual. Regardless, this is a map where you typically would see cloaky light vehicles and that was about it. Sometimes shields. Occasionally heavy tanks, though Lowry, if Lowry's going for light vehicles, it's it's a light vehicle map. Lowry loves heavy tanks, and also hovercrafts. But Lowry in this game going for light vehicles, that's that seems to be their confidence. Seems to be what they want to go for. And double check in the northeast. Definitely when you're fighting as bots, it's a bit easier to go up and down the ramps as bots. Just, that's the way bots work. And as a result, the north side would be a bit more... A bit more tempting, I would think, for Flipstep. I think it'd be kind of free, you know, just put some defenses down here and it takes a bit longer for Lowry's forces to get up the hill. But, Flipsip's not done that. Flipsip's gone for the center directly and Lowry, taking advantage of that fact, gets off a free metal extractor. That Scorcher has been getting so much value. I'm pretty sure it's the same one. If it's not the same one, the one that was brought back was repaired. So regardless, there's a lot of value being had by those Scorchers. However, Flipsip getting a nice siege in with the boy. We've seen before that boys are very powerful units. You don't want to, you do not want to underestimate them. They are one of Amphib Factory's most powerful units on land. It's just the range, the slow. They deal a fair amount of damage, and they have 1250 health. The only downside is they cost 300 each, but 
Yeah, as long as you can keep them alive pretty well, which is not what's happening right now. That particular boy died ignominiously, even though it did manage to get a couple defenses off. It did not die well. Not gonna lie. Lowry continued to harass around the side with the Scorchers. One over the top, one over the side, on the west side of the map. Yeah, Flipstep is gonna have a hard time expanding down here. They cannot expand naked. That's basically what Lowry has guaranteed. And Lowry, on the other hand, they are expanding naked, and Flipstep can't really do much to defend the ass because, I mean, what they can do, one thing they could do, but I don't think they're gonna do that just due to the lack of numbers. One of the weaknesses of playing Amphib and going for a boy-focused strategy is that you I mean, you can go down this hill, bots can path down this hill. There's, as you can see, there's some purple, but this is all pathable. Like, these small points in between, they can walk down that cliff. Which means, Flipstep could send down a scallop or two to basically block off any naked expansion attempts. However, doing so would mean the center is far weaker, and as you can see, Lowry doesn't even care about that, going around harassing. But yeah, the center on Avalanche is very important. I mean, Lowry is doing a lot of damage, hitting around the back, just harassing, making Flipstep very cautious, very paranoid. However, whoever loses that center typically loses the game. Like, the center here, even though there isn't much in the way of metal, it's still the direct rush path. It just makes it a lot easier from there to be able to harass, attack and harass. And like I said, these cliffs are... These cliffs are... Let me select a bot first. This one, no. But this one is bot pathable. So having to control the center basically means having control of the southwest as well. And the southwest, as mentioned before, has plus 14 metal in total. So getting that is a big deal. And as you can see, Flipstep is going pretty well for taking the center. They are behind an economy, however, and Lowry can with the right forces, which... Really, Wolverines, that's pretty much the right force in this situation. Will be able to ultimately push back Flipstep. And Lowry is taking the southwest. Flipstep might be able to get the southwest in the future. They might be able to, as the game progresses, be able to take this center position and push down. But I don't know. It looks like they aren't even have confident enough to be able to do that. They don't have a whole that many units right now. And because of the economic disadvantage, it's going to be difficult to really maintain it. Not to mention, Lowry has these Scorchers hanging out. They can just go down and harass once again. And surprisingly, Flipstep apparently didn't have any conscious in their base to be able to build up or rebuild all those metal extractors. Like, if they rebuild those metal extractors, they'd be pretty much at parity with Lowry. But it's been about a minute and a half that they haven't been. That's a big deal. At this point, Lowry... Lowry, at this point, is surprisingly not that close. 3.1 to 3,000 metal for offense. Lowry has been putting a lot of their metal into defense. That really is where the disparities come in. But now Flipstep is taking advantage of that position, moving a scallop southwest, getting rid of a Scorcher, getting rid of a few metal extractors, and that Lotus there, that will go down pretty quick, actually. Scallop will be able to pretty much beat it, and Scorcher coming into the center, getting itself torn to shreds, doing basically no damage, and down goes that Lotus, the Scorcher behind it, not actually helping out. Lowry getting cut off in their expansion attempts, though I don't know if the scallop is going to last long, too long from here. The Scorcher not dealing with it. Yeah, that scallop basically is going to live until it hits this Lotus. It has no water to heal in, so it's pretty much just stuck with this. But still, that scallop has done a lot of damage. If it can go here, if it hit this, I don't know what... What does Flipstep know? Flipstep... Oops. Flipstep knows nothing about what's going on here. They're going in blind, and they're going to lose the scallop to inattention, unfortunately. That scallop won't be able to deal any more damage. Still kill off a couple metal extractors and open up the path somewhat for a couple boys to come in and clear that out completely. So Flipstep taking advantage of their having taken the center. As I mentioned before, that's exactly what I said. That's exactly what would happen. The center gets taken, the southwest is now open. The northeast, not so much. The northeast is only opening for each player are these ramps. That's it. This ramp here for the north player and this ramp to the south here for the, south, for the eastern player. That... However, like I said, is not as relevant. There's only plus four metal and a geothermal. Southeast, there's two geothermals and plus 14 metal. All of which belong to Lowry, but now it looks like it's going to become... Well, no... It's going to become no one's... I don't know if Flipstep really has much to actually take it with. They can destroy what Lowry has, which is good. That's definitely worth doing. I just don't know if they're going to be able to ultimately destroy this and then take it themselves. In fact... Being able to destroy this looks like it's going to be a bit too much as well. The boy is getting hit by the Scorchers up close. That Heat Ray is working its magic. And that boy is going to be unable to do much more than this. Getting hit by a few Wolverines here or there. And as the center starts to get taken as well, the Wolverines in the center have been breaking that open this entire game. And now it's really paying off. 
Felicitas commander is forced to retreat at half health. Felicitas able to take the northeast, however, breaking the opening on that, or breaking the hold of that, but still, it's just... The southwest, Felicitas can't really take it for themselves. They can't really destroy Lowry's holding it completely, not with a one boy. They have to send a few more units in, and they do not have the military to do that. As you can see, 3.3 to 2.1. Lowry is ahead. Lowry has gotten ahead. Their economic advantage has really paid off, and Flipstep is going for an all-or-nothing gamble with this Grizzly. Given what Lowry has, primarily Wolverines, I think the Grizzly is... If the Grizzly's on hold fire, it should be fine. If the Grizzly's on hold fire and manually fires at the Commander, fires at the Stinger, fires at these defenses, it should be okay. If the Grizzly, however, is not on hold fire, which it isn't, then its reload time will be the death of itself. Six second reload time, it's going to waste it on these mines. And in doing so, it's going to end up getting a lot of free shots. It's going to get a lot of damage taken off of it, and that's... That really would be unnecessary. Unless there's some screening boys. If some boys or scallops, I suppose, or... No, ducks would be a bad idea. If boys or scallops are sent in in order to screen for that grizzly, that would work. But I don't see any boys around. There's this one that's trying to retreat, getting back into Flips' base, which should be able to do so. This one Wolverine is trying to finish it off. But it cannot... Like, Lowry doesn't know where that flip... Well, she kind of knows where it is, but the Wolverine cannot get in range. Every time he gets in range, has to stop to aim, and when it does so, the boy is able to move away. But yeah, there's, there is a duck for screening. That's not the best option, just because it has the same sort of reload time problem. It's still a four-second reload time. So it can sort of screen, and... Okay, the Grizzly is going for the right targets, at least. There are no claws in the way. There are some defenders here and there which are less than ideal as targets. While at the same time, Lowry is retaking the southwest as should be done and starting to take the northeast as well. Wolverine's flanking. Like I said, this is all or nothing. The Grizzly's basically trying to push through. That Grizzly needs to push through all the way. Preferably kill the commander. Definitely kill the factories. As we can see, a gunship plant is being built up with a black dawn on top of that. It needs to get through and kill the base completely or as completely as possible. The more it does so, the more of a chance Flipstep has in the next five minutes afterwards to be able to win the game. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. Ducks coming in for the north, trying to get rid of these Wolverines, which should work out decently well. But the Grizzly is retreating. The Grizzly should not retreat. Scorcher's getting up way too close, and this looks like it's going to be nothing rather than all due to lack of screening forces on that Grizzly. How unfortunate. Flipstep had a really good shot there with that, with that Grizzly. They were just able to push through. Had enough screening forces to get in, get that Grizzly all the way to the factory, and destroy the factories. That was their strongest hope. That was their best shot at doing so. And having lost that, I don't know if, what they're going to even do at this point. I Yeah, Flipstep. I should micro. Well, putting on a whole fire would have been helpful, but I think the Grizzly was probably used as well as it would have been. I think it was just... Having a, a few scallops or boys alongside would have basically made the difference. I mean, hold, hold fire and manual targeting would have helped as well. I just, I don't think it would have been the thing to necessarily do. I don't think it was the biggest thing. Anyway, flip step looks like they're probably going to be throwing in the towel. I don't know. Usually people start being a bit chatty right before this render, so I would assume this is what's likely to happen. We'll see, though. Flipstep is fairly behind. 1.8 to 5 point. Yeah, they're... There we go, there's the, I think the GG. No, no GG, but there was a surrender. And that was game one. Very interesting game. Good demonstration of how Avalanche works. Very, very canonical in that way. That was kind of neat. So we'll be going on to another game. It will be between Lowry and Flipstep. Not the same night, though, so yeah, the win counter will be a little bit awkward. I might just reset that. Anyway, Lowry, yeah, they, they were flanking really well. I mean, the one thing I'd say about Flipstep, they... They left these, it's a common mistake, I do it all the time, forgetting that, oh yeah, I lost these melee tractors, I should retake them. But remember you do that in the heat of battle, that's tough. And the shot here with the boy was really good. I think it was just the scallop as well. I mean, flips have gotten unlucky. They didn't know where the lotuses were, so they ended up walking into the lotus and that happens. Still, that was a good shot with the value in the scallop there. Lowry just had a lot of flanking going on and was able to push through the center with the Wolverines. Those Wolverines are pretty scary. They're tough to deal with, especially with the claws guard with amphibs. Scallops kind of work for screening, but they're expensive. Ducks don't work really well for screening except to get hit and then they die. Amphib doesn't have a huge amount of options. Their best option is probably Scallop. 
Yeah, off the top of my head, that, that seems like the best option they have. Anyway, gonna be going to another game. It is going to be a game, once again, between Lowry and Flipstip, but this time it is going to be on Fields of Isis, a map that I haven't seen too often, but it's... Well, it might be long and tedious, it might be very exciting and interesting. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it'll be exciting. So stay tuned for that, it'll be up in just a minute or two.